Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. Um, I have a bit of a treat for you today. If you guys know my channel well enough, you know what I do. I build vans and I kind of started building vans with a really, really big project, which was a millet or a, like a house on the back of a military transport truck. Well, I sold that vehicle to some friends that live in the Yukon. They're climbers, surfers, adventure people, and they brought the truck down to Vegas, which is where we are right now. And um, they park it here during the summers and then climb all winter. We're here with Welly today, the military truck house that I built once upon a time, and we're gonna do a tour of it. So without further ado, Welly. All right, so we'll just start with an exterior tour of the truck. I'll kind of show you all the nooks and crannies of uh, what I did and what they've done since. And um, yeah, so let's get started. All right, so first off, Welly is a 1990 Leyland DAF T244. Leyland um, commissioned DAF, which is a Dutch truck manufacturer, to kind of combine forces and build the Leyland DAF as their like all-purpose military transport trucks. So this truck was imported to Canada by the British military to the Badass uh, Station in Suffield, Alberta, and then used to train British troops in Canada. In 2006, these trucks were uh, decommissioned. A bunch of them were taken back to the UK, but some were left behind. This one was auctioned off at Crown Auction and purchased by Mike. Mike uh, is a collector in my hometown of Abbotsford, BC. He purchased this truck, fixed it up, and actually um, rented it out to the movie uh, industry in Vancouver. And this truck was actually at one point in a uh, movie, which is kind of cool. I bought the truck in 2018 and then built out the whole living area over the period of almost two years. The truck is powered by a 5.9 liter Cummins wall valve or 6PT. I had to do some modifications to the engine. Uh, at first it came with a Lucas cab injection pump. I switched it to a Bosch VE injection pump with a Denny T air fuel delete. That's what it's called. And just gave it a little bit more horsepower. I put an intercooler on it. And then I also swapped out the transmission to a ZF5 S42 transmission. So I have a higher top end gear for highway speeds. I did do all of the fabrication on this truck. Uh, I built the bumper, built the roof rack, I built all the boxes around the underside, um, and I also built the whole enclosure on the back. The enclosure is made of steel frame, and then it's skinned in 0.065 aluminum uh, sheeting that's actually just glued in place and then riveted on the top. So it's a really simple construction, but really effective. And then there's about two inches of insulation in the walls um, just to hold the heat. So these cabs um, from the factory come completely uninsulated and just like really kind of utilitarian. So I gutted the whole thing and did my own custom interior. So as you can see, I kind of went for a bit of a cabin vibe. I put wood on the doors. Um, these are actually Subaru w WRX seats. I put a new ceiling in with a center console, stereo, um, backup camera and all of that stuff. And yeah, did a few other little things. Um, put a bunch of storage in the back as well for, you know, all your extra stuff that you want to bring with you. And just in general, I made the, the interior a lot more comfortable to drive in. So the new owners of the truck actually um, had a tire blowout on the highway, like right after they left uh, Canada. And so what they did is they actually got a full set of five new tires, which are these Michelin, uh, what are they? They're 395, 75, no 395, 85, 20 on modified MRAP wheels. So a company in the States actually took the MRAP wheels off of an M1087, uh, Stuart Stevenson, it's like basically the American version of this. And then the centers were taken out and then a billet aluminum center was made so that you can take the rims and then mount them onto the DAF axles. And then you get a wider rim so that you can have a wider tire. So 
now the truck looks like a monster truck, which is pretty awesome. <laughs> the truck has a 100 gallon uh, tank. So at roughly 13 miles per gallon, you can get 1300 miles out of a tank on this truck, which is pretty amazing seeing as it is eight and a half tons and basically a driving wall. I did build uh, all of this here. So this is just like a fairing for the tank, just so you don't see the tank. This right here, like I built all of the storage compartments on the underside. I think these are probably locked. Yeah. But I just wanted like as much outdoor storage as possible. The new owners put a surfboard rack on the side for exterior storage of their surfboards, which is pretty awesome. On the roof up top, there's a lot of solar. I don't know exactly how much there is. I think there is four panels of varying uh, size up top. Um, the whole interior system is 24 volt, which I'll show you. So on the back of the truck um, is the tire carrier, which I had to build because there, before factory, this, the spare tire was actually stored on the underneath the, of the truck, but I wanted it on the back. So I built this whole structure that comes off of the bottom of the frame, goes up the back, and then there's kind of a, a winch style um, crane on the back. So the tire can actually swing out and then you can lower it down. Those tires now are probably close to 300 pounds. They're very, very heavy. And then just for a little bit of extra wood storage, I put these old ammo cans in the back, just because it's a military truck and I figured I'd keep the theme going. All right, coming around to the other side of the truck, um, just showing you some of the other storage compartments. This right here is actually the storage compartment for the propane. There's a 20 pound propane tank inside here with a small electric ball valve um, that will actually turn off the gas from, on, from the inside of the vehicle. So I did that just because I didn't want um, propane flowing into the inside of your living space all the time. So you can actually turn it off and on now whenever you want to cook. The only line going into the inside of this vehicle is for the propane stove. There is no other propane going in there and the regulator is actually on the bottle here and then there's only one or two uh, connections on the inside that are well sealed. I've had a lot of questions about that from people on the other trooper video of this truck, you know, talking about how unsafe it was to use um, the stove that I did in there. I, I made it as safe as possible. The regulator, the one fail point is on the outside and then the, there's only one propane line going in there. It is no more dangerous than the old propane stoves that you find in campers. So. That's settled, I guess. Right here is um, just another storage compartment for, for tools and such. And, uh, you know, there's a big, uh, I'm not gonna show you inside there because there's all of the current owner stuff, but yeah, just a big box of storage. What I did for these, just to keep weight down, is I made a steel frame and then skinned it with aluminum. So like all of this stuff is actually just BHB taped on, um, which is a really great option if you prep everything right. Um, it works great for just keeping, you know, aluminum panels on steel because obviously you can't weld and then rivets will eventually corrode. When I built this, uh, this truck, I wanted lots of storage for bikes and so I made a really big garage. I opted not to do a pass-through because I felt that I didn't need it, but I did need storage for bikes. So now, We have a really, really large storage space for bikes, surfboards, skis, all that kind of thing. And then also the water tank is in here and then the whole water system is in here. I chose to put the water tank up front just because um, it's kind of the best place for the water to actually be um, for weight distribution in the truck. Um, and also it's the kind of the, the one area of the truck that has like the least amount of motion. Um, this is not a baffled tank, which can be problematic. So yeah, you just want to try and put it in an area that um, there's going to be less motion. As you may know, when you're traveling out of a vehicle, storage is, is uh, you know, 
prime real estate, so I just wanted to make sure that there's lots of storage. And um, there you go, you can store four bikes in here, surfboard, keys, all that stuff. Also good to note on the other side is actually a six gallon uh, heat exchanger water heater. So the coolant actually runs up into the water heater, heats the water while you drive, and then you'll have hot water for about two days. And then there is a 110 element in there that you can heat the water that way. All right guys, now for the interior. Hey guys, welcome to the interior of Welly. When I built this thing, I was really aiming for the cabin feel. So I used a lot of recycled wood, a lot of wood paneling, and did everything that I could just to make it feel warm and homey in here. And the new owners of this place, this, this truck, have done an absolutely fantastic job of really making this place a little lived in, which I couldn't have asked for more. So, Right here, we're obviously in the kitchen. Um, we have a fully functional propane dual burner stove with an oven. You may know, as many people have, that this is an outdoor stove. As I said before, I made this as safe as possible. There's no regulator on the back. The only line coming into this space is one propane line that goes right to here and everything is nicely sealed. We have a, a deep, um, just like bar sink here that goes down into a 12 gallon uh, gray water tank. Have running water. I just did it really, really simple. Just use copper lines coming out. Um, all the copper lines are on the outside of the wall so that they can, you know, if there's a leak, it can be identified easily and fixed. And that was kind of like a, a theme that I wanted as well, that everything in this truck could be easily fixed by almost anyone. I used as much Canadian stuff as I could, like, this right here, um, where I originally stored cutlery. This is an old toolbox, and you can see that it was made in Canada. I found this toolbox in a barn, <laughs> and you know, kind of spray painted it, and um, and then just mounted it on the on the wall, and now it holds cutlery, which is great. I used Canadian copper railings to hold in, um, you know, all the jars and stuff like that. This right here that, you know, has, I made this for like coffee and tea and stuff like that. This is an old box that again, I found in a barn. Yeah, it's like a lot of just found stuff. I have kind of like a, a rough ice box here that it's kind of like just a storage area for fruits and vegetables. It's insulated and just meant to store kind of extra little things just because it's hard to get into this corner piece of storage they have you know bits of storage here uh, storage under the stove this storage here goes all the way to the back um, storage here also this this nook back here was actually made specifically for my dog when um, I built this so there's actually like a little animal nook back here but of course um, the new owners they don't have a dog so they just put uh, their climbing gear in there so there's there's storage in behind the seats like so there is deep storage underneath the seats that go all the way down storage in here and then the whole electrical system is actually housed uh, behind the seat in here I did kind of like a parallel 24 volt and 12 volt system because the truck runs off 24 volt I wanted to be able to charge um, the electrical system using the truck as I mentioned I did a lot of like recycling of old materials so like the doors here these doors are actually pulled out of like an old decrepit 80 year old house and I just cut them to size I used the old hinges and you know like made a cupboard door there's a closet space in here now I chose to use a Nova cool 12 volt refrigerator these are made in Canada and everything is made like really simplistically you can see that there's like stainless steel hinges um, you know like little things like this right here it's not, it's a stainless steel retainer for the door so that it doesn't come open. It's not just a plastic piece of junk. 
everything on this fridge can be replaced and bought parts for. So really high quality stuff, but also you can fix it. It's not a refrigerator that has planned obsolescence in it. Going forward to a little bit more storage, you got garbage and recycling in here. Um, this wood stove I actually made myself and they actually, the, the new owners actually still use this, which I'm really, really happy about. Um, it's really, really great to have, you know, a nice little bit of you know, like coziness to have a fire in here. So in here is the wet bath. This space, um, it's not your full size bathroom, but it is a very functional bathroom. This is actually an airhead composting toilet, uh, similar to your nature's head composting toilet, but it's made for yachts. So it's a lot more uh, low profile and it's smaller and just fit really, really well into this space. There is a shower head in here. Um, basically you just attach the hose to here and then you can shower. Fan in the ceiling, cedar paneling, and then this, uh, these walls were actually made from recycled tin from a uh, barn. So lots of barn stuff in here. You can actually get into the garage from the inside. So if you just open this door, you can get into the garage and grab whatever stuff you need, if you need to do that. And then of course there is the bedroom. So there's a full queen size bed in here with about three feet of headspace. Um, there's just shelves on the, on the front wall of the vehicle to store all clothing. Shelves up here for more clothing. Uh, kind of cool thing about this is my mom made all the uh, blinds and the cushions in here. So there's still the blinds that my mom made in here. Uh, the cushions were made by her as well. And these blinds here were made by her. So again, big thanks to my mom for being such a good sport and uh, <laughs> making cushions and blinds for all of my vehicles. When I was living in this vehicle, I actually didn't have a heater other than the stove, which I really wish I did. But before I sold this truck, I installed an Eberspacher 4 kilowatt, 24 volt diesel heater, which you can see the outlet right here. And then the alt altitude compensating easy start uh, is right here, along with the switches for the vehicle. Um, you can see that this these lights are on a dimmer. We got a light for the bedroom here. And then this is an exterior light. And I put all of the fuses and stuff like that in here, which again, this is a recycled fuse box that I pulled out of a barn. And then I put all the fuses and stuff like that in here so that they're easily accessed. In the bedroom, there is a max air fan. And then there's also a skylight. There's storage up front there and then just book storage here. Hey guys, so that concludes the tour of Welly. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I had to kind of end the video abruptly just because I was on a bit of a time limit and I wanted to be conscious of the fact that I was in someone's house, which leads me to a very important point. If you happen to spot these guys on the road and you wanna go talk to them, just remember that you're approaching someone's house. They do live full time in there and of course, it's a big military truck with a house in the back. Everybody wants to talk to them. Just caution you to be respectful if you want to go and talk to the new owners of Welly. Glad you liked this video and I hope you come back for more. If you did like it, hit that like button. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. And until next time, remember to just keep on roaming. Later. And also as just a last note, if you have any questions about Welly, something I maybe missed or you wanted more details on, just feel free to leave a comment below. I will do my best to answer whatever questions you have. It's been a while since I've owned the truck, so I'm a little bit hazy on the details, if you may have noticed, but I will do my absolute best. So thanks again. See you later.